So welcome to our investigating blue tack experiment. So this is just something that you can do at home with things you can find at home to explore the properties of blue tack and see what it can and can't do. So this is how we would approach experiment as a material scientist. So we're going to look at what we need to do to get ready for it, how we conduct the experiment, and um, what you can do next to sort of look at similar things or other things you can do at home. So we're going to look at this, we're going to look at how we can investigate the properties of a material using simple experiments at home. So we need to look at certain things, we need to do it in a certain order. So first of all, we're going to go through what we're going to do, then what we need to, in order to be able to do this experiment, then how we do it, and we're going to do a demonstration of that um, using a webcam. Then we're going to look at what this experiment and its results mean, and look a little bit about the properties of blue tack that we can do a bit of research on, and then what you can do next. So other things you can do that might help you look at various different properties of various different materials. So what are we going to do? We're going to investigate the properties of a material. Now material scientists do this a lot. Um, we have to do it because different materials behave differently in different environments and we want to know what's the best material to use in these circumstances. So for example, you wouldn't use the same material to build a house in the desert, in the Sahara Desert, as you would to build a house in the Antarctic. So we need to look at how different materials behave in different places, in different environments, and different temperatures, which is what we're going to do today. Well, the first thing we start off as a scientist, we look at a hypothesis. So a hypothesis, even though it's quite a long word, is basically what scientists call guessing what's going to happen. So we're going to guess what this material is going to do and how it's going to behave when we conduct our experiment. We're going to do the experiment and then when we're doing our experiment, we're going to document what's happening. So we're going to write down our results. Now we will use numbers to do this. Um, it could be a time, it could be a measurement, but we'll look at that when we do the experiment. And then when we've finished, we look at our results and we come up with a conclusion. So this is where scientists look at the data they've collected, the information, the numbers that they've collected, and decide what those numbers tell us about the material and whether their hypothesis, whether their guess was correct or not, whether they were right. Now, sometimes they are right and a lot of times they aren't right. And this is just as useful. Not being correct is just as useful because we look at then when material doesn't behave how we expect it to do, and that gives us different ways of using that material. So that's what we're going to look at there as well. What you will need for this um, experiment is some blue tack. You don't have to have a new piece of blue tack. It's fine, you can use blue tack that you've got lying around, but there'll be different ways of preparing the sample, so we'll go through that. Um, scissors, we'll need that if you're using scissors, if you're using a new block of blue tack. If you're not, then you'll need um, other equipment that we'll talk about in a minute. If you're not comfortable using scissors or you're worried about using them, then please have an adult on standby um, to use them if you are not sure. We also need some greaseproof paper or baking paper. If you haven't got that, then kitchen roll or toilet roll will do just as well and we need sellotape to fix that in place. Now, as I said, we're going to measure um, our results. So we can either do that a few ways. We're going to either use a ruler or a timer. And as I said, if you're using old blue tack, you'll need a kitchen scale to prepare your samples. So how are we going to do it? Well, as I said, we're going to do the experiment. I'm going to demonstrate the, de the experiment using um, a webcam and I'm going to do it with you. But first of all, as a scientist, we need to prepare our samples. Now, samples are very important, particularly in material science, and material scientists and engineers spend an awful lot of time preparing their samples so that they are the same. Um, we're not going to do that. We're not going to spend a lot of time, but we want them to be similar. We want them to have similar sort of sizes, or as I said, if you've got all blue, blue tack, we're going to weigh them, so they want to be similar weights. So I've, as you can see here, in the middle, I've marked it out and I've cut it, and I've got four strips there. Now I've actually used seven in total, so I've made seven strips. 
Four of them I've wrapped in the greaseproof paper and sellotaped it together. Now, greaseproof paper is another fantastic material if you ever want to do any experiments with that, that nothing sticks to it. That includes sellotape. So you have to wrap it around so the sellotape sticks to itself because I want to make sure that no moisture can get in there. I don't want to know the effects of moisture on blue tack. I want to know the effects of temperature on blue tack. So I've wrapped them up in grease proof paper and I've put two in the fridge and two in the freezer. Now I left mine overnight, but if you can put them in for an hour, I think my first experiment I did for an hour and then the other one I did overnight. The one, I've used the one I left in for an hour, just so you can do that as well. So that's what I've done first. So seven samples, three to use at room temperature and four to be wrapped up, two in the fridge and two in the freezer. Okay. Right, then we're going to do the experiments. So we're going to pull the blue tack and then we're going to record our results. So we're going to do our experiment now, but before we start, we need to sort of think about what the material is going to do. We have to come up with a hypothesis. So what I'm thinking is, I think that blue tack will get more sticky, will get more stretchy as it gets warmer. And I think it will get less stretchy and more brittle, sort of like snaps, like a Kit Kat or a biscuit, um, as it gets colder. So that's what I think is going to happen to this blue tag. So we're going to, that's our hypothesis. I'm going to do the experiment now. So I've, what I've done to make it more uniform and to make it a little bit fairer, I've turned all my blue tack strips into balls. So I've got one, two, three, all together there. So, we can all do the experiment the same, whether you put it into strips or weighed it out so it's in different individual parts. So that's what I thought would be the best thing to do. So, what I've done now is I'm going to just take it. I'm not going to do anything to the blue tack to start with. I'm going to pinch it that way and that way. And I'm just trying to get them as close together as I can. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm just going to pull them. Now, if you're timing this, obviously you need to do something to record that. Right, what I've done is I've pulled it till it's broken and I've let it snap back on itself. So that's the length I'm going to look at. So that's the length of that one there, just that there. So if you're measuring, that's what you need to measure. Again, taking the second sample and squeezing them together and pull until it snaps back and it snapped back like that as well. And thirdly, this one, and, oh, darn it. oh, and that one didn't last as long. So again, if you were timing it, that would be short and do that. So I've done three just so I get an idea of what's happening because if you just did one then you something could go wrong with that one and then we don't have one set of results so by doing three it gives us a few results to work with them. Okay so now I've measured using my ruler I'm going to measure each of those I've got four centimeters five centimeters and five centimeters so all very similar size so then when I've done that I'm then going to rub them together in a ball and I'm going to put a bit of body heat into these now, so I'm not using like a microwave or another or anything like that I'm just using body heat to put some warmth into those so just for a little while don't do too long because we want to increase that heat as we do them further on so again each one of these I'm going to warm it up before I do the experiment so again I'm taking them and I'm pulling a lot longer this time I didn't snap back as far so that's the first one then we're going to warm up this second one again not too long 
again using my fingers there and pulling apart again it's done the same much stretchier and doesn't snap back as much so much more fluid this time and again warming this one up not too long taking my pulling again if you're timing this is quite important this bit wow that's going for ages and again that bit's so these now again i put them down as they've stretched so much much longer this time so the first one stretched to 13 centimeters the second one was 12 and the third one was 15. so that's the second run now again putting them back into the balls and same technique holding them like that and pulling them apart trying to maintain the same rate as i did in the first one okay and again like i say it's not come back not snapped back i'm warming this one up so we're trying to not leave it too long in between because we don't want to lose all that energy we put into them to make them warm in the first place so pull them apart 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 Oh, that one snapped back quite a lot so that must have got cooler so we're leaving it there so i'm just going to warm that up a little bit more just in case i did leave it too long try again no it did snap back so that one snapped right back so that's interesting we've got like a little bit of what we would call an anomaly something that's different something that's not what we expected so warming up this last one again a little bit more and you should feel the heat in your hands as you rub these together so taking that same procedure pulling it apart oh right okay so again not as long now that one's closer to the second one so this time my first one stretched to 24 centimeters the second one was four and the third one was 12. So the first one acted like I would expect it to. The second one acted like the first experiment we did with these and the third one acted like the second. So we'll give it one more go and let's try and make them really, really warm. So you might have to warm them up a little bit longer this time. And we're hoping this will be the longest one. So this should hopefully be stretched really quite far. Getting a good pinch and pulling. Oh no, there we snapped a little bit. Oops, on. So it's not behaving quite how we wanted it to or how we thought it would do. Now it could be because of the shape I've chosen to um use the samples but let's keep going that's a bit better wow okay well, that one's a bit longer again i don't think it's quite as long as the last one we did but we'll have a go keep going a bit more keep warming it up and your hands should get quite warm when you're doing this don't do it so it hurts but right and again and pull there we go that's much better so again much more than we expected but it snapped back quite a lot so again we've got the first one's 12 centimeters the second one's 23 and the last one's eight so we're not getting as much consistency we're not getting the things that are happening the same but like i said that could be the because i've chosen a ball now if i was to try it with a sort of a more rolled shape we could try that and see what happens i'm not going to do that this time with all of them but just to sort of give you an example of what could happen then it could stretch even further there you go so have a go at different ways of doing it record what you're doing if you wanted to sort of take the temperature if you had a thermometer um, to take the temperature of it 
think most people have with COVID now, haven't we? Got all the thermometers in the house. Um, you could do that, so you could record the temperature and the stretch as well. So that will give you an idea of what's happening. Um, so the hypothesis that things get stretchier as we do, maybe not quite as regular, quite as straightforward as we thought it would be. So the next thing we're going to try is where it's cold. So that we're going to use the ones that I put in the fridge and the freezer. So this time we're going to look at colder temperatures. So we've done the warming up, but now we're going to do the cooling down. So this um, piece of blue tag, it's a little bit wider, and got stretched but this one is just room temperature. This one has been in the fridge for about an hour and this one's been in the freezer for about an hour. So all we're going to do, I've only got one, one of these, so we're going, we're going to do is just pull them as they are. So I'm not going to walk like rub to put a ball, I'm just going to pull it as it is. So we can see the room temperature one just comes away. Slow, I did it nice and slowly, so it just comes away like that so it stretches like we said it would before not very far but it has stretched now this one's been in the fridge so let's see what this does oh actually it's more than i thought it would so that one's stretched quite a long way that one but on the ends probably where i'm holding it so i warmed it up enough so it will stretch there but not in the middle like it did here now this one let's see what the frozen one does now that's stretched much more uniformly and when I mean uniformly I mean it so it's notice this one's got like its little edges is pulled there this one hasn't done that that's all stretched quite evenly across all of it and it's stretched far more than the other ones have so I thought when I started this I came up with what I would say is a hypothesis so I thought that because it was colder and remember I said when you warm it up it makes it a little bit more sticky I thought if I cooled it down it would make it less sticky it would make it what we call brittle so it would snap but it hasn't it's actually done the opposite so as we made it colder it's kept its shape a little bit better so that's something else that you could look at Again, not requiring any particular um, equipment, just a bit of blue tap and just put it in the fridge and in the freezer and see what happens when you stretch them. So now we've done our experiment, we're going to look at what do we think this means. So we guessed that blue tack would be more elastic the more we warmed it. Now this we found out to be true because it stretched further the more we handled it, the more we warmed it up. And this is what you would do when you are fixing blue tack to paper to then put on the wall. You would warm it up because you wouldn't use it straight out of the packet. We want to warm it up and that gives it more stickiness. The other thing that we guessed was that blue tack more brittle if we cooled it down. Now this wasn't true because it got more elastic but in a very different way. It wasn't as stringy and it wasn't as um, pingy I think we, we use the other term we use. It didn't ping back, um, it just stretched out um, and it stretched more uniformly, it stretched more evenly as we pulled it out. So that was something that we didn't know it would do or I didn't know it would do when I cooled it down. It didn't get more brittle, it didn't snap, it was more elastic. So that was that was a that was a nice surprise. So again that tells us how we can use um, blue tack in a different way and it will work as blue tack should in different environments. So just to give you a little bit of science here, um, this is what blue tack looks under a really strong microscope. This is something we call an SEM. So um, this is what blue tack looks at a really microscopic level. So you can see that it's quite springy and it's, it's got like fibrous bits in there, but also it's got little like 
books there that we can catch on to things. So blue tack works by spreading really thinly and it seeps, it like moulds into all the little tiny indents on the wall when you put it on a wall, forming a vacuum so that keeps the wall and the paper together. It's not too strong, that vacuum and that seal, that you can't undo it. This, this seal and this, the bonds, what we call bonds between the material, are much stronger in the blue tack than they are outside of the blue tack and the blue tack and the paper. But this is also what makes your hand you feel sticky in your hands because you warm up the blue tack, it goes into the tiny crevices of your skin. So if you look really carefully at your skin on your fingers, you've got all those ridges where your fingerprints are, the blue tack goes into that and that's why it sticks to your fingers as it gets more and more warm and more and more sticky. So this is how blue tack works. Now, the reason we say, why well, does blue tack get blue tack here is we handle it. Structural adhesives, so that means structural adhesives are glues, like super glue, form an irreversible bond with a surface once they've hardened. So that means that they can't be undone. Once we stick two things together with blue um, super glue, it can't be undone, but blue tack can be. It's called a pressure sensitive adhesive. So when you press down on it um, with paper onto a wall, then it forms a um, like a sticky bond. The other things that this works with is things like a post-it note. So if you have a post-it note, you know when you take it off the pad, it's sticky but it won't stick permanently to a wall. It's, it's very temporary. And that's why blue tack's a great thing because it doesn't stay there all the time. It doesn't, even when it gets hard, you can still remove it from the wall. Now this is something that's really clever about blue tack, but there's also other materials that, that do this. Um, this is because they stay solid when they're left in their own devices. So if you look at blue tack in the shops, it's in its pack. When you take it out of its pack, it's solid. But as they warm up, they flow like liquids. So they become more flowing. Do you remember I said when it pinged back, it became like more fluid and more, more tactile. That means it sort of like moves as a fluid. Um, that we can't pour blue tack and we certainly can't drink it but it flows over itself it flows when it's um, warmed up a little bit more now we found when we cooled it down it did stretch better but it didn't flow it all went together if you remember a uniform um, stretch meant it didn't go sticky like the other one did so that's maybe something that we could look at so hopefully that's given you a better idea of why blue tack works the way it does and how it works. But have a look, do some research into um, what they call non-Newtonian fluids and non-Newtonian materials. So perhaps have a look at something like that, which is what I've suggested you could do next. So you can look at different ways that make blue tack more or less sticky. So does water have an effect on it? Does it stick to some surfaces better than others? I mean, what about leather? What about wood? What about plastic? See what, what works and what doesn't work. Think about what I said about your ridges in your fingers and where your fingerprints are. See if we, that makes a difference. Use that theory, use that idea to see how blue tack works in other areas and with other different materials. You could also look at things that are non-Newtonian like gravy and custard and cornflour and water mixed together and see how they behave when you press on them but then when you leave them to their own devices so they're a little bit different to blue tack blue tack's solid when we leave it to its own devices and um can become like like a liquid it flows more when we warm it up whereas gravy and custard and cornflour and water behave slightly differently so maybe it's worth having a look at things like that but that's just a few things you can have a, a go at at home other things that you can use at home that would help you sort of investigate things and use those skills that you've come up with today and we've shown you to help you become a scientist thank you very much and hope you have fun <laughs>